You know, since the Mike Bickle allegations broke in October of 2023, myself along with many others have been calling for Bickle to truly repent right of everything. You know, not just the inappropriate behavior, but the false prophecies as well, the cover-ups. And that really, you know, extends past Bickle even to other former IHOP KC leaders that really just kind of dug their heels in and did everything they could to prop up Bickle and, and the ministry as a whole. And let me say this, no one can say that God is not long suffering because it is evident to me after I thought, right? I mean, everything has pretty much come out now about IHOP KC. I mean, you know, look at all the exposure that we've seen. I mean, there can't possibly be more exposure, but no, wait, there is. And again, it is an example that God is allowing all of this to come to light because he wants these people to truly repent. He wants to open up the eyes of those who are still involved in ministries like this, who have been hypnotized, because that's really what it is, they've been hypnotized by the lies of these leaders that they just, they, they refuse to believe it. They, they can't let it go at all. You know, I always talk about what the Bible says that God's will is that none should perish, but that all would come to repentance. You have to understand that we may not like people like Bickle and, and you know, and, and all the other leaders that did what they did, but God loves these people. Okay, that's undeniable. And he wants to see them in his kingdom. Now that's up to them whether or not they're going to do that or not. They have been given every chance and every opportunity. And when they go before him, on the day of judgment, they have to give an account of their life. They cannot say that they did not have ample opportunity and time to turn it around, to truly repent. So that leads me into this. With this just huge piece of news that has come out, again, another exposure, will this be what leads Bickle to finally come out and repent and reveal that IHOP KC's entire prophetic history is a sham? We'll see. We're going to get into this. It's very interesting. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How in the world do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos if you want to get to know me better. And also, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider making a donation to help me out? There's a few different ways you could do that. One, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can make a monthly contribution. Join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. Link there in the description. Bunch of cool features with Patreon, but one of the ones that I love the best is that when you join Patreon, you get all these videos before they hit the main YT platform, okay? So you're gonna get this ahead of everybody else. I hope you will go ahead and check me out. Join me over there again, patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. A huge piece of news that was dropped by the Kansas City Star. They have done a really good job of reporting on everything relating to IHOP KC and Mike Bickle since the allegations first broke back in October of 2023. And out of everything that has come out from the star, I mean, we even know that Tammy Woods gave her story to the Kansas City Star when, when she, you know, talked about, you know, in full her experiences with Bickle and everything that went on there. But now we have the prophetic history that has been called into question. And I, and I want to point this out before I even get into this, because I think the timing is very interesting. It was back on May 5th, and I talked about this in a previous video. Isaac Bennett, the forerunner church pastor at IHOP KC, was preaching a message. And in it, he was defending, he was doubling down on the prophetic history. Now, this is where I'm, I'm telling you, this is where God is coming in. He doubles down on the prophetic history tells those that were in attendance during the service that we can't turn from this. We can't let this go. I mean, he was propping up Bob Jones. He was singing this guy's praises. We know about all of his things, right? You know, he was basically praising Mike Bickle, telling people, you know, Mike Bickle was the founder of IHOP, as if we don't know, right? But I'm 
I thought that, you know, this organization was supposed to be permanently separated from Bickle. Yeah, no, they never really were. And, and this was strange because, you know, Bennett had expressed that, you know, he was really seemed interested, at least to me in the beginning, although I was skeptical, that he really did want to permanently separate from Bickle and, you know, move IHOP KC in a new direction until that leaked recording of the internal staff meeting came out where Bennett was talking about how, well, IHOP KC, we don't want to be liable here. You know, we don't want lawsuits coming against us. And so we're going to rebrand and we're going to restructure. And it's just like, you, you basically just outed yourself. How could you say that? You know, they probably didn't think that it was going to get leaked, but I mean, in these days, you know, transferring assets and everything else like that. So, you know, I really believe this guy's true colors were on full display here. And there was all sorts of talk that Bickle was in his ear, potentially, you know, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, I know the influence of Bickle is strong and the fact that, you know, Bennett was singing his praises here. Maybe he actually was in his ear after all. So that's on May 5th. Now, two days later on May 7th, because I got to kind of give you this the background here because it's going to lead up to what we're going to get into. Uh, two days later on May 7th at Hope City KC, this is the inner city prayer room there that is run by Mike Bickle's sister, Lisa, along with Bickle's nephew, Richie. They held the 25th anniversary celebration of IHOP KC, which uh, there is to me nothing to celebrate. And I said at the time that really it should have been a funeral uh, to finally put this ministry under once and for all. But no, that's not what they did. They instead, again, it was much like Bennett's sermon on the 5th, two days prior, singing the praises of the organization, propping up Mike Bickle. They even played a video of Bob Jones up on the, you know, the screen there. And, you know, you had the Edwards, that Misty Edwards was there doing worship, okay? So she's, you know, still in the mix there. You had Diane Bickle, your Bickle's kids were there. Mike Bickle wasn't there for the actual quote-unquote celebration. Uh, but this was just absolutely disgusting. You know, again, after everything that we've now seen come out about this place and, you know, all the victims that have come forward, here they are just, you know, saying, oh, look, look, it's, look how great it is. It's like if they're holding on for dear life and it's just, I have KC hit the iceberg a long time ago, uh, but these people are just, they refuse to let this thing go and they continue to double down on it. So that was on the 7th. Now this leads me into the report by the Kansas City star. They dropped this. Uh, this was on Wednesday, May 15th. They dropped this. I believe it was Wednesday, May 15th. It might've been the 16th, but I think it's the 15th. And this was about the prophetic history of IHOP KC. Now for decades, you have to understand, not just for decades, but Mike Bickle built an entire curriculum. Okay. Based off the 418 prophecy. He even talked about it again in a sermon back in April of 2021. This was, you know, this was basically how they got all their donors to come to the table. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a part of what God is doing in the earth, right? I mean, just, we, we have to sow into this. But it was all done through manipulation and through lies as it was exposed in the star. So here's what happened. Because Bickle, again, has told this story for decades Right? This is what IHOPC had been really clinging to for their entire existence. It was back in April of 1990. Paul Kane. Now, we know Paul Kane's history too, right? He's just like Bickle. Bob Jones, all of them. The Kansas City Prophets, right? Well, Bickle talks about how one day back in April of 1990, he went with Paul Kane to visit Paul's mother, Anna, who had been in the hospital for a while. She was 104 years old. She had been in a coma. And he tells the story about how they went to go see her. And then all of a sudden, Anna awakes from her coma. And she speaks to Paul. And she said, Paul, this is very brief. Paul, God is giving you and the rest of the earth, Luke 4, 18. Now, she couldn't get much further than that because, as Bickle claims, right after she says this, she loses consciousness and then she passes away. Bickle says that Anna Kane passed away on April 18th at 4.18 p.m. after giving Paul Kane and him the Luke 4.18 prophecy. Now, if you go into Luke chapter 4, this is where Jesus is in the wilderness. He's praying and he's, and he's fasting there in the earth. And, you know, the evidence of the Holy Spirit is 
you know, really coming to light here through this ministry. And this was something that was going to be planted as well and transferred over to IHOP KC. So, you know, again, they ran with this for tech. Again, they built curriculums and an audio series based off this for the university there and everything else. And, and people, you got to understand, they were completely taken, you know, just like they couldn't believe it. Again, manipulated, they're hypnotized by it. Because again, you want to be part of what God is doing here in the earth, right? Who wouldn't want to be? Even Tammy Wood spoke about this after the report dropped in the star. She said this too. She said, I mean, everywhere you went, people were talking about the 418 prophecy. And and you had, you know, other former IHOP KC leaders that are now speaking out this about this as well. But what came out from the Kansas City Star? They did some digging here. It turns out that Bickle lied about a couple things here. One being that Anna Kane, in fact, did not die on April 18th. And how they found this out was that they found the gravestone of Anna Kane. Turns out Anna Kane, she passed away on April 19th, the next day. Oh, and she did not die, by the way, at 4.18 p.m. After checking the death certificate, it showed that Anna Kane, in fact, passed away at 9.50 p.m., on April 19th. And again, Bickle for decades ran with this prophecy that Anna Kane passed away on April 18th, 4.18 p.m. after the Luke 4.18 prophecy was given. And again, this, I mean, this is huge. And will this be what maybe finally brings Bickle out and admits that this entire ministry was a fraud? Part of me thinks not, but anything is possible. Now, IOB KC was reached for comment about this. This was very interesting because they were asked, you know, what, what are you going to do about this? You know, the, you know, this whole prophetic history. I mean, we were questioning the prophetic history before. I mean, just based off all of Bickle's inappropriate behavior, over the years, right? I mean, you can question it even with that. I mean, you know, telling these women that, you know, when you know, Diane was going to die young and you're going to be my wife and all this stuff. But now with this one, IHOP KC said this, that they are going to be working with third-party advisors. Third, who's that? They didn't say, by the way, who those third-party... Now they want to work with... Third, they won't do a third-party investigation, but they're going to work with <laughs> third-party advisors to... Sift through IHOP KC's prophetic history and see what's worth salvaging and what's worth discarding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but there is nothing worth salvaging as it comes to IHOP KC's prophetic history. Nothing at all. And no doubt there will be people that hear this, they're going to be hurt. So pray for them because, again, they trusted not just, you know, Mike Bickle, but this entire organization because they bought into a prophecy that was given. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Looking at, again, we, you know, there, there's been other things that have led us to this conclusion already. But, but now based off of this and the whole Anna Cain deal, again, really, she dies on April 19th at 9.50 p.m., not April 18th at 4.18 p.m. The entire foundation of IHOP KC was not based on anything that was given by the Lord. It was man-made by Bickle to serve as his own playground for inappropriate behavior and so much more. What more will come after this huge revelation only God knows, but again, I'll point it back to what I said here at the very beginning of this. You can't say that God is not long-suffering. He is allowing all of this to come out, again, because he wants genuine and pure repentance. Isn't that a great example of what a good God we have, of what a great God we serve, that he has allowed so much time, so many chances for these individuals? All you got to do is cry out to him. Fully repent. Take yourself fully out of ministry. Some may think, oh, I, I just, I, it's, it's, 
I've done too much. I can't go look at, I mean, Bickle has done so much wrong, right? But at the end of the day, even still, God would be willing to forgive him and allow him into his kingdom. It's not just, I just, I can't get over that. That's amazing. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. You know, we, we talk about these issues in the church today and, and, and we need to, it, it's important, but you know, still we're talking, oh, the wrath of God has come. It is, it is. We're not there yet. We're not, there's, a, you know, we're still in that little small window left where people can repent, but, but it will end. That, that, that time will come to a close. You just hope it's not, you know, too late before these people make that decision to fully repent and change. We'll see where it goes. But I want to hear from you on this. You guys can let me know your thoughts down below. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate the work here of this ministry, feel free to donate. You can do it by just hitting the super thanks button here on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description. What I want to do right now Something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church, exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I welcome your thoughts. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.